Hey everyone, welcome to the grand finale of Ask the Experts. It's the final episode with myself, Jeff Bacalar, and Peter Brown from GameSpot. That's who I am. That's who you are. This is upsetting, it's bittersweet. We're in the last sort of category. Don't, no, no, no it's, it's gonna okay. be okay. Sorry, sorry. I have a feeling you and I are gonna be doing this again. I'm gonna make you guys come to New York and we're gonna do this again. All right? All right. Uh, now we're gonna talk all about our opinion on what this all means. Are the consoles worth it? Are you getting your money's worth? Should you upgrade? All that kind of stuff. So the first question we got is from Alexander, and he says, if he has a PS3, is it worth upgrading to the next generation, mm. the PS4? Is it worth it? I almost don't even want to consider it upgrading. For all intents and purposes, going from a PS3 and then upgrading to a PS4, there's really no upgrade. No. One, there's no backwards compatibility. Right. So there's really no sort of migration. It's just a new system with, in, a, in a new generation. So do you think it's worth it for the bump in multi-platform games, like your, the, the graphical and performance bump? Do you think that's worth it? Maybe. I know some people are interested in better graphics primarily, right? And that's right. really what this new hardware is about for the most part. So something like Battlefield 4, Assassin's Creed 4, those games that are appearing on PS3 and 360, as well as the Xbox One and PS4, are gonna look a little bit better. But again, like, do more polygons at a higher resolution mean that I'm cool spending four or five hundred dollars just to get that? I mean, this has been the longest gap between console generations, right. right? So people are obviously hungry for new hardware, and there's an anticipation and the excitement that comes with getting something that's new and shiny and different. But at the same time, you know, when are you fooling yourself, or when are you actually doing yourself a service? Right. So maybe neither one of us actually sees the value in picking up a new console. Right. But Michael wants to know, do we think, in our opinions, that these systems are worth their asking price? That is sort of a tough question, I think. Yeah, I mean, we already answered it about the games, but how do you feel about the hardware and the, the added value that these things bring just to your living room in general? You know, when you look at the price of each, Xbox obviously being $100 more, in my opinion, that $100 does not feel worth it right at launch. Right. Because I lived with Xbox One in my living room, I've got the scars to show it <laughs> and prove it, and my wife did not enjoy using Xbox One as a remote control for our cable box. She watches a lot of HGTV. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that channel exists. It's all about fixing up houses and whatnot. <laughs> you say Xbox, go watch HGTV, and it just doesn't know what to do. It, sure. it has never worked. Yeah. But when you deconstruct the hardware inside each console, I mean, let's call a spade a spade, right. you're, there's more horsepower in a PS4. There is. Yeah. Yeah, there, the GPU is more powerful. The RAM is so much faster. For sure. You know, each of these consoles too, as much as they are hardware and games, there's also the service that gives them a lot of the, the functionality and entertainment that right. people really look for. So now you've got to balance Xbox Live versus PlayStation Plus. Both are required for multiplayer on their respective consoles. And I should say both of them give you free games, but Sony is giving you free games every month for PS4, right. PlayStation 3, Vita. Yep. I mean, it just, it almost doesn't stop. Like, if you remember, you just have a list of free games. But Xbox Live Gold is a hose job. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. Yes. The yes. fact that you need to pay $60 a year yeah. to watch Netflix. Yes, that is not good. That's mind blowing that yeah. that's even still a reality. When you line them up and you look at what each sort of bullet point equates to, right. Xbox Live Gold really does feel like you're getting a runaround. Yeah. And even, I think even Skype requires Xbox Live Gold. Yeah, I think which so. Which is crazy. Yeah. Think, how crazy is that? Crazy, I, it's, it's It's <laughs> mind-blowing. Some of the game DVR functionality is yeah. tied to that as well. Sony is being a little more flexible, a little more generous. Right. And they're not trying to bombard you with things that you're not even asking for. I mean, Pete, Pete Brown, man, this is just... This has just been a goddamn pleasure, is what it's it has, been. It has, it has. All right? Yeah. More of this, more of CNET, more yes. of GameSpot. Yeah. All right? Let's promise me. I promise you. you. Pinky swear? F yeah, we got a pinky. <laughs> I need that I back. I don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to let go. I don't. How could you blame him? <laughs> this has been fantastic, sir. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the questions. Hope you guys learned a lot. That'll do it for this round of Ask the Experts. I'm Jeff Bacalar from CNET. And Peter Brown from GameSpot. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you soon. Take care.